Um, yes, uh, I'm coming in from Pakistan. As you can see, I'm not Pakistani, but uh, American by origin. But I've been living here for the past 30 years, and we're the founders of the Deaf Reach School Program. We have schools for deaf children. Um, and when we talk about the educational challenges in Pakistan as a whole, even from the mainstream perspective, you've got a population of 221 million. Pakistan is the fifth largest country in the world. Um, and there's already uh, 23 million primary children that are out of school. This is before COVID. And an additional 13 million children who don't go past fifth grade. So that's 36 million out of school children under normal circumstances. And this whole situation has been very much exacerbated due to the COVID situation. And then when we talk about the educational challenges for children with disabilities, the outlook is even more severe. Uh, I work particularly with deaf children and in Pakistan, you've got an estimated 1 million plus deaf children and hardly 5% of them have access to uh, education or a school opportunity. And the, the schools that do exist, the private uh, schools are located only in the main urban centers in the three or four key cities. But 75% of the population live in rural areas. And so there's really little access to education for deaf children that are growing up in rural areas. The schools that do exist are government run schools, which are not the most efficient. And they only go up to grade eight. So there's a huge challenge there and that challenge has been further uh, uh, increased due to the whole COVID situation. Um, just to give you a little background on the program which we've initiated here, it's called uh, Deaf Reach Schools. And we started this when we first came to Pakistan 30 years ago. My, my wife and I are parents of a deaf child. And we started with a little one room school in an office building where we were uh, mentoring uh, teenagers, deaf teenagers, uh, providing them with literacy skills, helping them to find employment. And parents would often come to us as they heard through word of mouth, please, you know, do something for my child. Uh, as there were so few facilities available. Um, one thing led to another and we opened a small school for primary age kids. And from those small beginnings over these past years, this program has grown to where we now have seven full-time school campuses in seven different cities, uh, where we have an education program that goes from kindergarten all the way up through college. And I'm very proud to share that two years ago, we started a BA program uh, in for deaf children, uh, one of the few higher education programs for the deaf in the country. We have about 1,200 students across these seven schools. All of them are profoundly deaf. Our classrooms are bilingual. All the children are signing. Our teachers are fully signing. And all of our kids come from low education, low income family backgrounds, village areas, particularly in Sindh and Punjab area. We, in fact, in order to enable them to come to school, we provide pick and drop transport up to a 50 kilometer radius for every single student on a daily basis. And as you mentioned, Sean, the challenge of transportation at this point with COVID is become, has, has been part of making school inaccessible for these deaf children. As sign language is the native language of a deaf child, and each country has their own sign language. In Pakistan, it's called PSL or Pakistan Sign Language. Um, this is something we focused on developing in our schools uh, because there's such a dearth of resources available. And we developed the first online digital sign language dictionary for the country, which now the whole country is using. And that has 6,000 uh, signed words in it. You can learn more at our website. It's just deafreach.com. So I, I just want to share a little bit what's happening in the present situation with the COVID here in Pakistan. Uh, 
basically all schools have been closed and then they reopened, then they closed again. And we can foresee this cycle going forward until things can improve. For deaf children in particular, this is very challenging because when the deaf come to school, they're with their peer groups, everybody's communicating. It's a very enriching, nourishing environment. But when they're home with their families, for the most part, their families are not signing uh, unless they're children of deaf adults, which then they have a, a leg up, but that's only about 10% of the kids. So there's a deterioration in language skills in addition to the loss of their academic uh, year. So this was very concerning to us. And what we've done is built on that digital platform that we originally developed for the dictionary and thought to ourselves, why can't we develop a distance learning program for deaf children by actually having our teachers film the curricular content for each grade level? It was a big, hairy, ambitious goal, but when we saw COVID wasn't going to go away very soon, starting in July, we started tackling this, and our teachers have been working full-time, even though schools are closed, to do just that. And we have filming the curricular content for English, Urdu, math, and science for all grades, grade one through grade eight. And through some generous donors, we were able to purchase a very low cost uh, refurbished laptops for our students. So we provided a laptop for each of our student. And as we set up an in-house studio and as we're filming this content on a monthly basis, we upload it on a USB and our teachers deliver it to the students in their homes and or the student comes with their parents to the school to collect it. Additionally, we provide lesson plans on paper and worksheets so that we can check the progress of the kids. And those that do have internet access through WhatsApp are able to communicate with their teachers to get off uh, online assistance. So this has been very successful. Um, we don't have all the data in. It's relatively new. We've only done it over the last couple months, but we're really excited that this is a solution is not as good as in classroom learning, but we've seen some great results. Um, and we feel not only is this going to help our kids make it through the year and be able to move on to the next level, but ultimately all this content is going to be able to be posted on our online website and available to the whole country free of cost. So this becomes a repository of curricular content in Pakistan Sign Language, which with also with an Urdu voiceover. And this can capacitate teachers who are very undertrained, sadly, and be available for households uh, to use with their deaf children. And ultimately will be up there for years and years to come and can be added to. And I think this model is something that is replicable, it's scalable, I think it's very relevant for other countries, especially in the global south, where programs for the deaf are very underfunded, deaf children are marginalized to the extreme. And I think we have to look for ways to break through those barriers. And I'm hoping that what we learn from our program will serve that purpose. Um, I'll close here. Just somebody was asking me what tip could I share? What advice could I give? And I think the thing that we found was the most relevant and important was including the parents in this whole program. So from the start, when we were ready to do the orientation and bring in the students in small groups to give them their laptop and content, uh, we made it mandatory that the parents had to accompany that child. They learned how to use the laptop, which 90% of them had never touched a laptop before. Um, we taught them how to navigate, how to access the content, how to turn it on and turn it off. And we even found some that couldn't figure out how to get it open because they didn't know the latch had the slide. So uh, little things, but very important. And since that time in our follow up and monitoring, we found that the parents have been engaged with their children. They've not only been helping them, but they're learning themselves. And a spin off of this is some of our parents are gaining literacy and sign language skills as well. 
So I'll close there. Thank you for that time.